we're back at PAX Unplugged, and I'm here with Matt Smith and Matt Tayback. And uh, what are your roles with um, Wizard of the Coast and Transformers TCG? Sure. Well, with Transformers TCG, I uh, am a game designer and the creative lead. Uh, can't really speak any further on my role at Wizards. <laughs> that sounded so secretive. What do you actually I'm do? Not I'm not a lot <laughs> That's crazy. Um, hi, I'm Matt Tabak. Uh, so I'm the rules manager for Transformers, so I write all the rules documents. Uh, I also work on the templating team, so the team that puts together all the card text and new abilities, what they look like, and things like that. So, so let's start with um, something that I keep hearing from other players from time to time. I know you've been updating the uh, the rules, yeah. um, at least the um, there's more like an enhanced edition, I believe, right now, so that you've yeah. added stuff about focus, planning, and so forth. Um, what do you think that a lot of players tend to be very confused about? Is there something you would like to help clarify? Do you feel that that uh, you find some players making the same mistakes over and over with certain things? That they yeah, probably my number one answer there is just the order in which things happen during the turn. Um, all of our initial documents that we put out there, put out the learn to play guide and things like that, they were a little light on details because when you're teaching someone a new game, you don't want to dive too deeply into the weeds. You want to just sort of get them familiar with basically what's going on, kind of what the bots are up to and the battles. So we didn't put out a whole lot of detail as far as some of the more complex abilities at first. Uh, but of course our fans are ravenous, so they immediately jumped into super complex tournament scenarios. So we kind of had to kind of accelerate our timeline on getting all the details out there. So now you're starting to see some of those uh, more precise turn guides and things like that. Now, concerning characters, are you, are you surprised, is there any characters you're surprised that hasn't been uh, a big, as, as talked about as much as some of the other ones yet? Oh sure, uh, do you mean in terms of Gameplay, or in terms of like fan favorite uh, character type stuff. I, 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 I meant gameplay, but I love to talk about okay. fandom stuff. Well, I, I think that the uh, I think that the jet fire from the first set is really good, and he doesn't really get a lot of play. I think some of the um, players who are more interested in funner things might try him from time to time, but I'm constantly surprised at how few people play him because he's actually got really good stats and a really unique ability. Um, in terms of things that have to do with flavor. It's kind While of interesting. he thinks, I will tell you this. I have walked the floor of the Energon tournament. I have looked at many decks, and very few of them have Megatron. I oh, find this okay. foolish. <laughs> These stupid Autobots and their jets and their thing. Play Megatron. <laughs> do, you, do you play Dungeons and Dragons? If you, if you haven't, you should. I've never heard, is that a game we make? Is that, uh, no, yes, I am, uh, I'm actually in a D&D game uh, currently, though I, I missed this weekend's uh, because I'm here. Uh, I, am I giving you enough time to think? Oh, I'm, yeah. What do you do at Wizards? Oh. <laughs> it's so scary. I was gonna, I was gonna say that uh, one thing that surprised me about, in terms of flavor-wise, what people play, is uh, I know, like going into the game, I, I wanted the Insecticons to be in the game, right? They're, they kind of represent another side of the, De the Decepticons who are mostly just jets, right? <laughs> in general, right? So I was like, all right, I got to make sure these, these characters who really don't have a lot of fans are in it. And I was hoping it would create some new fans, and I think it, I think it did. I, I think a lot of people like Insecticons flavor wise. They might get frustrated about playing against them. But I think that because of how good they are in the game, it kind of gained some some people some loyalty to to the idea of the bug bug robots. That deck bugs me. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you have trouble sometimes when let's say you have a character and let's say for example um, Mirage turning invisible in the, in the cartoon series, and then you want to make the, the character in the game sort of, sort of emulate that, but you can't. You know, you have to follow the the rule structure of the game. Do you come across those issues from time to time? So that's definitely one thing I do. Um, kind of how the process goes most of the time is we have a whole pile of designs that we made and then I, after the fact, assign them and then tweak them to make them fit a little bit more snugly with the characters. Though, if there's a really important character, we'll kind of, like for example, one, whenever I'm making a design, it's usually with a character in mind, but that's not necessarily the case for the other designers who are a little bit more focused on the game. Um, and yeah, there'll be there'll be trouble every now and then. You'll see uh, there's that blue streak that uh, has the ability where he kind of flips into oh, a, yeah, in wave two, and he flips and he has uh, no attack, but he's harder to hit. I think uh, 
there was a point where we were actually planning on maybe that to be smoke screen and we're like oh yeah this is this is him using the smoke screen now and then but then there was some trouble with being able to use that card or that character at the time um one of the other pro big problems with that is also that I know we're going to have multiple versions of each of these characters so if I just like if I make the definitive sky warp that can teleport um, and what am I going to do with the other sky warps? So sometimes I kind of touch on it in different ways, and it takes a little bit of role play in your head to to get fully there. But uh, like for example, the first sky warp has an ability where he can direct the damage that's coming at him to another player. That's kind of meant to be him teleporting out of the way, right? And that's yeah. It, I I don't want to use everything 100% on just one card, so so I have to kind of figure out how to divide it. It, it's interesting because when Matt was talking about how the same character is going to show up on multiple cards over time. And so you can take one specific aspect of a character. Like in Wave 2, we might have Autobots who are ineffective at combat. And in Wave 3, we might have Autobots who are cowardly. There's a lot of things about <laughs> Autobots, many facets to work into the game, right? You can have Autobots who trip over themselves and are bumbling idiots. <laughs> all kinds of like varieties that you don't want to put it all on one character because we think we're going to be here for a while so we have many many facets of the weak autobots uh for waves to come <laughs> and and a great a great example for the decepticons would be the first uh air commander starscream right he's there to his his ability scales on planes so he's kind of backed up by having other planes and then the the king starscream in set two shows kind of his thirst for the crown and for for leadership you know that's kind of the the different sort of thing we can do noble like all decepticons <laughs> all right. so um what did you bring your own decks to this uh tournament by any chance did you bring a deck i brought a couple decks okay. um well, I, I won't make you play now but, <laughs> but I'm, cur I'm just curious i'm just curious to know like like what are your what's your character what is your deck like sure um it's a difficult question for me because the reason I even play these games is to have like 20, 30 decks. So <laughs> I don't really have one. But what I brought with me, I brought a couple decks that I think are, they're, they're a little bit, they're like tier 1.5. So I, I think that they're probably better than people give them credit for, but not quite, I'm not quite maximizing their effectiveness because I want to put a spotlight on some lesser played characters. So like one deck I brought is uh, Captain Ironhide. Buzzsaw and Detritus, and that deck is a, it's a blue deck based on abusing armed hovercraft. So you can use things like you can use dual you can uh, use dual wield on Detritus, bring the armed hovercraft back from from the scrapyard, trigger it, then you flip Buzzsaw to move it over to Ironhide, trigger it again, then attack with Ironhide and put it back into your hand to use the next turn. There's all sorts of fun things like that. And the other deck I brought is uh, Green Light with three Battle Masters okay. with sights. Uh, Dazzle Strike and uh, Vanguard, so that eventually the Battle Masters get KO'd and then they all go on green light and her ability keeps them from getting scrapped. So it just kind of builds a really big character in the end. That's just a fun deck. And for you? So I didn't think I'd have a lot of time to play this weekend because we do have the Energon Invitational. So I'm spending most of my time over there. Uh, so I'm lazy and I just brought Trypticon. Okay. Because, I don't know if you've seen this card, it's enormous. <laughs> and as we all know, size is the most important thing. Uh, not being an Autobot is also important, but Trypticon's awesome, so. Is there one character that hasn't premiered yet in the sets that you're hoping that you'd like to see in the near future? Oh, sure, sure, yeah. Um, it's a good question. Let's see, what, who is a character that I would love to see? I'm gonna, I'm gonna I, name someone that was actually in wave one and I forgot about it. Um, <laughs> still thinking, hang on. Oh, well, well, for me, really I, well, for me, I, I hope, and, you know, I understand, you know, that um, uh, Transmit TTG wants to cater more to the adult fans, but I'm hoping that sometime in the future they'll do like the Rescue Bots. That's so that I could introduce my son oh, bots, right? into the, the game, you know. Really you know, but you know, you know, I'm a patient man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Transformers have been around for so long that we're really hoping that the game is a good bridge between you know the parents out there, and they can start getting their kids playing. So it's a really good game for that. It's at the same time, you know, easy to learn, but there's a lot of complexity and depth. So good for the adults, good for the kids. There are some C stringers like uh, Gears and Brawn 
that I'm excited to see at some point for sure. Um, I'm also really excited to see some more Dinobots at some point, right? Because oh, Dinobots are answer. awesome. Dino Dinobots, despite being Autobots, and despite them being, you know, stupid, uh, <laughs> but, but they, they do are. have a lot of fans out there. And the fans are not stupid. That's important. So, yeah. I mean, Autobots, weak. But whatever. It's fine. <laughs> Everything's great. Well, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate the time to talk to us at Nerd Caliber. And, uh, yeah, stay tuned for more Transformers stuff.